Hi, Jillian here. Welcome to one of my favorite corners of my house. <laughs> um, we, uh, long story short, we uh, rented this house that we're living in uh, for a couple of years and um, <clears throat> it was just my heart's desire to one day, and I'm, I'm talking years and years and years and years, it's just this secret desire uh, that I really didn't talk about much, um, to buy a home in an area that I love uh, but one of the one of the most rundown homes in the neighborhood so that I can make it my own and completely forgetting about that you know desire that was there uh, we lived in this house for a couple of years um, we just couldn't buy and uh, then we worked really hard to position ourselves and we felt it was time to buy and uh, we were about to buy another home and I woke up from a dream that I know was a prophetic dream uh, to get me to consider talking to uh, the owner of the house to see if we could buy it. So long story short, we ended up buying this house um, and we have amazing friends that have um, one project at a time started bringing my vision to life and it was just one of those little little young girl fantasy dreams where I just always wanted a little window seat and um, so this used to be my office if you look back at other videos um, this was where my little chair sat this was like an office slash guest room and we knocked down walls and um, we were able to put in a double-sided fire pace and build this bench seat so here I am and it's raining outside so anyway <laughs> that's a short little story for you um, so hold on to those desires of your heart because you never know when God's going to bring you there. It wasn't anything I tried to get to. It was just a matter of trusting and um, God just takes us on these treasure hunts of our own heart and all of a sudden one day we can look back and go, wow, you did this. Um, so anyway, that's just, that's my little story for the moment, but that's not why I'm doing a video today. So last week's video was on, uh, what we believe and really what, um, what is shaping our belief system? Is it, um, you know, and I'm just going to throw out something I didn't mention in the video, but is it lies from the enemy? Is it, um, you know, the, the circumstances around us um, based on what we can do and our resources or is our belief system based around God's word and God's truth. Um, so I thought that kind of if I'm just going to continue to roll with these videos and kind of um, ask the Holy Spirit what should we talk about next, the thing that just continues to um, toss around in my mind is, um, and actually... It was also through several conversations. Actually, there, I, I find that I am in conversations with most people, and it, and it all boils down to the fact that uh, their thought life is out of, it's just, their thought life is not within the parameters of God's Word. It's, um, what are the words I'm looking for? I'm drawing a blank. Um, most people's thought lives are uncontained. They are running with the thoughts and feelings and emotions based on what they're seeing. And people, whether they've been a Christian their whole life or this is completely and totally new to them, this whole, you know, kingdom living, living God's way, um, understanding what his word says and kind of bringing ourselves back into alignment with the way that things were actually made and created, um, I find that most men and women really, really struggle with what it actually even means to take thoughts captive. In order for us to understand our belief system and then uh, bring our belief system back to God's design, God's will, God's plan, and God's truth, we have to start to take thoughts captive. And so I'm just going to read, um, this is like a fairly new Bible. It's super crispy and all my pages stick together. So I don't normally read from it. Um, but I wanted to read from the NIV, um, translation today because, um, there are two specific words that I'm going to continue to refer to. So I wanted to make sure that was in the scripture. So anyway, second Corinthians, um, 
10.5 says, um, let me get to it. Why do I feel like my vision's getting bad? This is not good. I'm not declaring it over myself that as you get older, you need glasses. I will not need glasses. Okay. Uh, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And a lot of times we read that scripture, we have it memorized, we've heard it, we know it, but we don't really exercise it in our daily life and we don't even know really what that means. And for me, um, I'm actually not going to really talk a whole lot from a sp spiritual aspect, quoting a bunch of scriptures, although that seems to be my pattern and habit. I can't help it, so we'll see what comes out. <laughs> um, but for me, a lot of things that I've journeyed through, a lot of experiences that I've had um, have actually unlocked spiritual truths. It's amazing how God has used uh, common sense, everyday life, and real life circumstances, and then bringed, br uh, bringed in, wow, brought in spiritual connotation of what that actually looks like. I received revelation to God's word through a lot of messy situations that I've overcome in my life. And so the one that I want to talk about is how powerful our mind is. So the reason why it is so important to build our belief system around the Word of God is because our actions follow our thought life. And I'm going to talk, I, let, let's, let's bring it down to some plain and simple truths. First, it's a feeling, right? Let's talk about being hungry. Your stomach tells you you're hungry, so then the thought that comes into my, your mind says, I'm hungry, then out of your mouth, says, I'm hungry, and then your thought tells your hands what to do and your legs. You're going to go into the kitchen, you're going to open the fridge, and you're going to make yourself something to eat, right? So, but it started with a feeling that led to a thought, and that thought then drove you in the direction that you needed to go in order to fulfill the feeling and the thought, correct? Okay, so... Why is it so important to renew our mind? Why is it so important to take every thought captive? Well, a very powerful journey that I was on. Oh, I'm seeing a leak in my roof. That's not good. All right, note taken. We need to check that out. There's like a yellow spot on my ceiling. Hmm. That's not good. Anyway. Um, okay, so what was I talking about? Oh, how powerful our thought life is. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little backstory about myself, and I'm, I'm throwing this out there, but I want to state this is not a weight loss video, okay? I am not sitting here. I'm not going to start talking about weight loss and things like that, although I was a health and wellness coach at one point in my life, um, and I was running park workshops and fitness. I'm very passionate about... Um, taking care of our body. It's a temple. Um, but for me, my journey, um, I really, really, really struggled with my weight. I was not the skinny girl in high school. Um, I wouldn't consider myself really overweight. I just always had a little pudge. I always had extra. Um, and I was pretty insecure of that and things like that. You know, your typical girl stuff. Um, and then uh, after I had my oldest daughter, uh, being a very young single mom and then also having some um, heart hurt, I found comfort in food. And um, so I really, I, I overate often. And I quickly went from only needing to lose about 15 pounds to get to pre-pregnancy weight. And like I mentioned, I was not fit or thin or really healthy, I just um, wouldn't really consider myself very overweight in that season. But I only had about 15 pounds to lose to get to pre-pregnancy weight. And rather than losing that 15, I ended up gaining 55. Um, and one thing that I realized through that journey is I would tell myself, I don't care. Um, so what would happen is, my feelings inside of my heart were hurting and I didn't know what to do with it. And I, want, and I wanted an escape. I wanted to get rid of them. I, did, I couldn't handle them. I didn't know what to do. So the feeling was there. I didn't know what to do with it. 
And so, um, I mean, studies show just the euphoric, the, the euphoric feeling and things that come over our body when, um, when we indulge in fatty, salty, and sugary foods and things like that. And so there's a chemical response that happens that I knew that I would feel if I indulged. Now, I really struggled with the weight gain. I continued to add weight. It was making me lethargic. It was making me um, just feel frustrated. I had no energy. I was tired all the time. I started to feel more and more self-conscious. I started to feel frustrated because nothing fit right, nothing felt right. It really was a downward spiral of depression and isolation and things like that. And so it was taking me on this vicious spiral but when I, when I started to play back and remember what I would tell myself, so remember I had this feeling, and I would tell myself that I didn't care about losing weight. I would have this argument in my own head that would say, no, don't eat that, don't eat that, don't eat that. You know you don't want to eat that because if you eat that, you're going to feel worse, then you're going to gain more weight, da, 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 you know, that cycle. And so what I would do to, um, it is without realizing what I was doing, I would say, I don't care. I just don't even care. And then I would indulge. Okay. So my mind would say, I don't care. But the truth is, is it was actually in contradiction to what my heart really wanted. My heart really wanted to be healthy. I did not want to be on this cycle anymore. But what happened is I took myself on the cycle starting with the words, I don't care. As I said, I don't care. My actions then followed what I was declaring in my mind and what I was declaring out of my mouth. And it was in contradiction to what my heart really wanted. And so that's kind of the angle I want to come from. Because what became the game changer in my um, wellness and health journey was that I stopped telling myself I didn't care. I started to take that thought captive and declare the truth that I did care. Now that didn't change my heart feelings, that didn't change my taste bud desires, that didn't change anything, but what it did is it started to counteract my actions. When I started to tell myself things like, I do care, and stop saying things like, I don't want to exercise, I started to replace it with, I won't regret it if I do exercise, I will regret it if I don't. So I started to really start to renew my mind and start to tell myself something different. I do care, I won't regret it if I don't work out, I'm gonna find something that I love, I'm going to take care of myself, I matter, I'm worth it, and all of a sudden my actions started following my thought life. As my actions started following my thought life, I started replacing my unhealthy habits with, with healthy habits. Then I started to feel better. I started to realize that I had hurt in my heart that needed to be touched, and I invited the heavenly, my Heavenly Father to come into those wounds and those places of abandonment, of loneliness, of rejection, of inadequacy, of fear, and all those places that really was the beginning of the thought life that took me down a path that God didn't want me on. And so I want to relate that to just everything, everything. Our minds are so powerful. The strongholds that come into our mind that, that hold us bondage to the freedom and the peace and the joy and the healing that God has for us is in the mind. And I'm not talking about spiritual warfare right now. I'm not talking about the lies from the enemy. I'm just talking about starting to connect and identify what thoughts are swarming in your mind that is causing your actions to then take you down a path that is not of God. We have to start renewing our mind. We have to start taking every thought captive. And I'll tell you, one of the ways that we can identify this in our own life is really start paying attention to the things that come out of your mouth. It says, out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart overflows the mouth or something like that. I'm going to look up the scripture and I'm going to get it written for you and I'm going to put it on this screen so that you can know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and a lot of people will use this scripture to condemn or to judge or to criticize, but I want to use it as our gauge. 
I want to use it as your clue to identify the things that are coming into your mind, that are in your heart, that are in opposition of what God has for you that they're in opposition of what God wants you to dwell on. He wants your mind to be clear. He says that we have the mind of Christ, that in him we have a sound mind. And if you don't have a sound mind, if you have a mind filled with confusion and chaos and lies and fears and worries and everything that is in opposition of what God has for you, then it's time to start taking them captive. So start paying attention to what comes out of your mouth. And once you start paying attention to what comes out of your mouth, actually, you can even look at your actions. What are your actions telling you? If you're saying, if your actions are doing something, then you have to go back to what your mind is telling you because your mind is the one who decides what your actions are going to do. Your mind is the driving force. You're not going to do anything that you didn't already tell yourself to do first. So you actually give yourself permission to do the things that you really don't want to do. So that's why it's so important and so powerful to retrain our mind. That's why this scripture where it says we demolish, I'm going to read it again, okay? We've got to demolish this stuff. We've got to get rid of it. 2 Corinthians 10.5 We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up, up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So now we're going to talk about it in our spiritual walk. When we say things like, I don't care, or I'm not going to, or I don't understand, our actions are going to follow it. But what if we started saying things like, I believe. You are for me. If you're, when, when, we're, when we're faced in a situation where we feel like we're put up against a wall and we have no way out, we say, God, but you are our way out. You have my answer. You knock down walls. You bring justice. You are my victory. What if we started renewing our thought life and started declaring the truth of God's word? All of a sudden, something starts igniting inside of us. It's his spirit. Our spirit man start to get bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger. Why? Because we are now renewing our mind in Christ Jesus, which in turn means that we're not living by the flesh anymore. His spirit within us starts to increase. We become empowered as citizens of heaven, as children of God Almighty, the creator of the universe, heirs to the throne of heaven, and all of a sudden we walk differently. All of a sudden those problems that we face are very small into it in the reality that our God is so big. Why? Because our mind is dwelling on the things that are true and lovely and pure and right, which is our Heavenly Father. And a lot of times what's blocking us is hurt in our heart. And so if that's the case, if there's if there's something that's blocking you to the point where you're not able to start, uh, where you're not able to renew your mind, then there might be something inside of your heart, an old wound or a hurt or an offense, or maybe that maybe you're holding on to unforgiveness and you've developed some bitterness. And so you find that a lot of things that are coming out of your mouth are very negative or very bitter and you've kind of got this broken view on life. You're seeing through a negative lens. That's not of God. And it's just, it's, it's, God just wants to do some heart healing inside of you. So anyway, I just wanted to throw out that concept today. Um, just the power and the importance and some common sense on why we're supposed to take these thought captives thoughts captive, why it's so important to renew our mind, why this is our sword, the word of God filling our heart and our mind with truth is really going to change the course of our actions. And I know for me, I can testify of this truth. Anybody who has known me longer than 10, 15, I mean, even the last five years, I would like to say that even in the last 10 years, I've been more and more free and more and more stripped of these things that weigh me down and hold me back from running this race that God has set before me and really walking in the freedom and the grace and the favor and the blessing and the promise and the peace and the joy no matter what goes on around me. And it's because my mind is telling me the truth about who God is. I'm able to clearly see and discern situations so I can see God's hand in it. And then all of a sudden, the feelings that are over me are really God's covering, God's peace, God's joy, His favor, His protection, His blessing. And I'm able to walk through these situations and these scenarios um, with confidence that 
The world around me may shake, but I'm standing on solid ground. I'm standing on God's word. I'm standing on God's truth. So, and, and, and like I said before, when we renew our mind and we start dwelling on the truth and we have these thoughts um, that are now in agreement, in alignment with God's word, our actions follow what our mind and our heart is saying. And if our mind and our heart are in agreement with the truth of God's word, then that's where we begin, we, we, we start walking this, um, this spirit life because now the spirit is taking over. We're no longer walking in our own strength. We're walking in his strength because we know that when we don't have it, when we're out of resources, we're going to call upon his name because that's the thought that now comes into our mind. I don't know what to do. What do you say, Father? And all of a sudden we tune into that still small voice on a regular basis. It's a game changer. So, Renewing your mind, taking every thought captive. I hope that this opened up your scope to a greater understanding of what that scripture means, what it looks like, and how it could be a turning point in your life. And then I also wanted to throw out a reality that sometimes it's so unfamiliar. It's Our, our minds have been... Um, without a leash for way too long and we actually don't even know where to begin it feels like a jumbled mess and we're going well i don't even know what i'm thinking about half the time and we don't know what it means to take every thought captives we're having a hard time identifying and connecting then i would just encourage you maybe to go get pastoral support or a solid friend who's got some discernment and wisdom and you know that they're anchored in the word you can see the fruit in their life that says you know this person um, is really, uh, they, their, their life is a reflection of what it looks like to um, live this journey according to God's word instead of the flesh and the world and things like that. Um, but also I have a ministry called Iron Bridge where this is what I do. I meet with people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, either through the phone or if you live locally, we can meet up in person. Um, and we start to really untangle the mess and start identifying where there's strongholds in your mind, where you might be believing some lies, where there needs to, where God just needs to come in and do some heart healing. And so I enter into these one-on-one -on -one sessions um, with prayer, and then the Holy Spirit just kind of guides us. And through the course of conversation, the Holy Spirit starts highlighting where these areas might be in conflict to what God has for you. And then we walk you to your freedom and your breakthrough. So I just wanted to throw out those, um, those thoughts to consider. And I just pray that the words that God put on my heart today met yours. Be blessed. Okay, that fireplace was hot. I forgot how hot it gets because I haven't sat in this actual corner in a while. Whew, I was dying with that video, but I was like, should I get up? Should I turn it off? Should I keep talking? Oh my gosh, but yeah, okay, so I feel better now. I almost needed to open a window and it stopped raining too. Anyway, I wanted to jump on here and close out this video with some information. The ways that you can stay connected, learn more about me, learn more about this ministry. Um, so I'm going to put my website up on the screen, jillianahonan.com. Uh, but I'm also going to put all of the links in the description panel of this video so it's nice and easy. Um, I'm going to do Iron Bridge, a way to contact me. Um, my website. Oh, and social media. Socialize with me. That is way fun to connect on a more personal level. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter under Jillian Ahonen. Um, and I'm going to put all of those links in the description panel. But I also wanted to remind uh, those of you who do not already know, we have a free mobile app. It's awesome. Um, so we've got minute inspirations. We've got anything that I write, videos that I post more on this ministry, Iron Bridge, if that interests you, you can read and learn more about that one. And you can contact me through my website or through my app, it's really cool. And then there's the inbox in there um, that will give you the notifications of anything new that I post. So it's literally all at your fingertips, super easy and awesome. Uh, so go ahead and download that. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can stay connected to me and in the know. Be blessed.